Here we go. This one says, Dear Brock, I need help. I'm in a new relationship and things seem to be going well. However, I can't stop thinking about my ex. I feel guilty, but no matter what, I can't help but compare everything my current boyfriend does to what my ex used to do. I also miss certain things he did to make me feel loved and wanted. I have a great boyfriend now and I'm lucky to have him. And I know he cares for me, but I just feel lonely. Are there any tips to help me get over him? Thank you. And again, that was signed by B. All right, B. Thank you so much for writing this in. Uh, we actually had a submission like this several months back, and I'm mm-hmm. glad that you're writing this because it gives me an opportunity to kind of dive a little bit deeper. So what I was saying earlier was that in your previous relationship, and maybe it was a lengthy one for, for all we know, we need a little bit more detail there, but I'm just going to assume that it was and that that previous boyfriend probably understood what your love needs were. So maybe it was words of affirmation and gift giving. Maybe that's how you feel seen. Maybe that's how you feel loved. And he understood that maybe through trial and error, maybe because you communicated that, or maybe he just got it. Maybe he just understood. The the new guy who seems to be like a good guy, you seem to, to be enjoying him. Maybe he just hasn't had the opportunity to learn your love language. And this is something that that does take some time if you're not able or you haven't had the opportunity to be vocal about the things that make you feel seen, valued, and loved. So if you're hoping that he's going to just pick up where your ex left off, that's going to put you into a really uh, like potentially negative situation, which is where you're feeling right now. You just feel very lonely, like you're not... You're not being maybe appreciated. Maybe he just doesn't get you. Maybe um, like like a, like you're saying, like you feel lonely and the, the love just isn't there. And if you're thinking he's a good guy, it sounds like he's not doing this intentionally. So I'm going to put the accountability onto you to be vocal about the things that are important to you, the ways that you feel seen and valued. So again, I'll just stick with the words of affirmation. Actually, let me back up. Let me talk about the love language. Yeah. Let me talk about these. So there's five love languages. There's words of affirmation. There's gift giving. There's quality time. There's acts of service. And there is... Touch, right? Yeah, is physical touch. touch. Thank physical you. Touch. Yes, yeah. So for most guys, most guys want physical touch and they want quality time. That's how most guys feel um, seen, loved, and valued. Now, I'll, I'm not going to say that words of affirmation isn't important to guys. I think it's important to everybody. Everybody wants to be verbally acknowledged for their efforts and and things that they're contributing to the relationship. But we all have two that are the chief ways that we feel loved. And if he is trying to spend quality time with you, your, your, your new boyfriend, if he's trying to spend quality time with you and he's maybe like taking you out to eat and he thinks these are, these are great ways for him to show that, that he's, you know, loving and contributing to the relationship, but you're just not feeling the love. This is something that you have to take a second, take, take a step back and acknowledge like, no, that's really not how I, I, you know, feel seen. So you have to have a conversation and don't say, you know, my ex used to do this or my (laughs) ex did this thing better. Like, obviously that's not what you need to do, but you can easily say, whenever I receive flowers, I feel so loved and seen. Now I'm not telling you, I need you to do that right now, but if you ever see flowers and you think about me, think about getting them for me on your own time. And I guarantee that the next time he sees flowers, he's going to get them for you. And um, that's going to start the positive cycle. But you have got to be vocal on what your love languages are. You you have to know what your love languages are first. Mm -hmm. Be very, very clear on on what your love languages are. But be brave enough to be vocal about what it is that you need in a relationship. Because just hoping that somebody is going to naturally or just by default understand exactly how you feel loved, it's just not a very, very positive cycle to, to get into. It's very, um, you know, you're, you're just assuming that they're going to understand all your needs and it's just not possible. So we have to be brave enough. We have to be um, kind enough to our partners to be clear on what our expectations and what our needs are in the love language area. And I know that there's plenty of quizzes that people can take online, oh, yeah. include myself, because mm-hmm. in fact, not until my most recent relationship mm-hmm. have I really even focused on love sure. languages. Savannah, sure. that was kind of her thing. Mm-hmm. So she kind of came into this world and was like, well, what is your love language? And I'm like, I don't have any idea what you're talking right. about until, so you might, you know, people might be listening and be like, love languages, what do we mean? It's a real thing. It is a very- There's no question about it. It, it is a very, very real thing. And um, the faster you can learn what your love languages are, the- 
um, faster you're going to be able to have that clear communication on what your needs and expectations are. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. funny because the way that you might give love might not be the best way that your partner receives it, which might be the issue here. And and that is honestly one of the one of the root causes I see with a lot of my clients as to why they do feel lonely or misunderstood or devalued. If you don't know what your love languages are, if you're not able to have the conversations about what they are, then you're definitely going to struggle. And there's one question that I, I like to have my clients ask their partner, and it's, how can I love you better? Mm. That one simple question can clear up so many pieces of, of animosity that might be building or um, avoidance in, in further communication. And once you ask that question, they can ask that question upon you, and then you can tell them what you need. Yeah. Clarity is king.